So I guess that's it. I guess we're live streaming. It's starting. Okay. I just want to make sure my head is in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. So you, you let me know if my head is bouncing off of a... No. Yeah, sounds good. Something. Yep. I think, we're, I think it'll be good. We don't have to overthink it. It'll work out. It's already, we're already doing it, so. Okay, cool. So, Back with it. Uh, we'll do it live. <laughs> anyway, sorry. No problem. So, um, welcome, everybody. I might be looking down on the desk periodically because I don't, I don't know where my head will be, but welcome, everyone, joining us for a special, I guess, Dynasty live stream or Dynasty podcast, whatever you want to call it. We have Adam, am I saying this correctly? Prado? Yep. Yep. That was perfect. Adam Prado of the uh, Wing Chun Brotherhood project. He will kind of talk about, you know, what that is and, you know, what he's doing with the Wing Chun Brotherhood, right? And um, we kind of got him on today because, you know, he's a friend of ours and uh, we kind of met through the Kung Fu community and, uh, you know, that our Dynasty fans or followers or, you know, anybody that check checking us out, you know, we're always about representing all of the martial arts, you know, not just mixed martial arts, not just jujitsu, but every every kind of martial art really. Like I, I love I love it all. I, I trade it all and I love it all. So but today specifically we're gonna talk about, you know, Kung Fu. Uh, you know, Chinese martial arts is Kung Fu. So that'll be the main topic of today. So if you are interested in hearing about Chinese Kung Fu, traditional Chinese martial arts, you know, maybe specifically Wing Chun, you know, you, you joined us on the right live stream. So uh, Adam, maybe you can uh, take a few minutes and just introduce yourself to our fans, who you are and what you do. All right. So uh, my name is Adam Prado. I um, have this project called the Wing Chun Brotherhood. I inherited it from two gentlemen named um, Nicholas Gregory and um, Danny Horgan. Um, both of them had some um, notoriety in the Wing Chun community. Uh, my Sifu, Nicholas Gregory, was um, one of the um, was a New York-based uh, student of uh, Leo Aoyang, uh, who was known for um, his fight choreography of the uh, first four Ip Man movies. Um, and Danny Horgan um, was um, had a bit of internet celebrity where he was going around smacking the crap out of um, internet sifus. Um, that's how some people interpreted it. I thought it was a good thing, you know, going around showing, uh, you know, an unorthodox style uh, against, um, you know, more traditional um, uh, Wing Chun uh, practitioners. Um, you know, he had a, a pretty good project, um, so got to see many different um, instructors, but uh, he had a lot of resistance trying to um, get in with um, a lot of schools. A lot of schools just shut their doors, um, but uh, he noticed uh, with uh, my Sifu Nicholas Gregory, who's very, very open. And he was like, you know, more, you know, there should be more openness in the community. So the two of them came up with the uh, Wing Chun Brotherhood as uh, sort of a, um, the, 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 the vision of the group was to just get people to train despite their lineage differences. Um, Danny had, you know, uh, decided to drop out of the project and uh, Nicholas uh, took it over and then uh, life got in the way of Nicholas and, um, you know, he that wound up moving back to the UK. So um, he, you know, he told me the project was dead unless I wanted to keep it alive. So he gave me the project and uh, I think I was sort of the right person at the right time to take on the project. Um, I was uh, somewhat new uh, to Wing Chun and uh, as a student, I was very eager and interested and uh, decided to keep it going. Um, so with some help from uh, people like uh, Sifu Mark Williams in the New York City area, we started setting up uh, Wing Chun meetups and um, we, uh, the very first one was literally, I think five people showed up, but not all at the same time. Uh, we had maybe three people there at most at any given time. So it was a very humble beginning, but, um, you know, we just kept like, you know, like, uh, the, the field of dreams. If you build it, they will come. You know, we knew that people wanted to get together and train. It was just a matter of, uh, getting the word out, showing people that we're doing this, um, keep getting people interested and motivated. So, uh, we just kept doing the pro the, doing the uh, meetups. Sometimes it was three people, then it became six people 
people. Then it became 12 people. And I think at the highest we had, uh, you know, more than two dozen people. And, uh, you know, it just shows you that, you know, um, uh, A, people want to uh, get together and uh, exchange skills. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, B, if you just keep keep that, um, keep at something, you'll, yeah, you'll go through a tumble beginnings. But if you uh, try long and hard enough, uh, it'll become a success. So, um, so that's what the Wing Chun Brotherhood is about. It's about getting people together to train. Okay, so immediately I have some questions because, um, you know, I'm trying to understand, you know, actually how the brotherhood <clears throat> works. So it's surprising to me that when you say this to me, it's like, okay, you mean Kung Fu pract practitioners do not in fact meet up and spar and kind of exchange skills on, on the regular? Because that happens with other martial arts, so why not? Why not region them? So I can't speak on behalf of the schools that I'm not a part of. I can only speak on behalf of the schools that you know show up to this thing. And it's like you know you would you would ask, well, if, if people are showing up to my thing, how can I, you know, say that this exists? But um, you know, it's mostly anecdotal. Um, there are many schools that I've tried. Like uh, when I had to find a new instructor. Um, there was a lot of resistance uh, to accepting me as a new student because I, you know, I was tainted with, you know, uh, somebody else's knowledge. Um, there were some schools where they just, you know, weren't interested in outsiders. Um, so uh, I had to find schools that would even consider bringing me in as a student, uh, number one. Uh, number two, as I mentioned, Danny had um, this project where his whole goal was to just go to uh, various schools and, uh, but his was different. He had a webcam, uh, uh, he had a camera that was going to record the exchange and therefore there was a lot of resistance and uh, uh, you know, people don't want to look bad on the YouTubes, right? So, uh, which never makes sense to me because it's like, you know, uh, um, who, who out there has perfect technique? You know, uh, nobody. Um, so, you know, um, he had a lot of resistance, um, you know, in get, in just uh, well, uh, welcoming outsider, uh, an outsider to their school. Uh, not to mention that it did not to say that it didn't happen. I mean, he had a lot of um, internet famous uh, Wing Chun guys, uh, Dominic Izzo, um, Jin Young was China boxer, who's, uh, you know, uh, uh, very well-rounded, very well-versed um, uh, uh, martial arts practitioner doing BJJ boxing and Wing Chun, probably missing five other things that he does. Um, you know, we had my own Sifu. Um, he had, uh, I guess, Jim Rosalando and uh, Frank Romero um, up in the Boston area at the time. So, you know, he had did get some uh, acceptance, but... I think for every person who said yes, he probably had a number of people who said no. Um, I, it's well known in the, uh, at least in the, um, um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, I, let's I, pause, maybe let's pause for a second there and yeah. let's break it down what that really means. Let's take a breather for, yeah. for our audiences. Um, why Why do you think it is that Kung Fu Sifus, this naturally leads into the topic, right? Why did you think it is that Kung Fu Sifus are reluctant to accept challenges from people, from outsiders, and put it on camera? Why do you think that is? Uh, I think it was well documented in the Ip Man film. If you remember the what happened, I mean, honestly, what you saw in those movies was probably more. It was probably the only accurate thing where you know the uh, the hidden fight scene with uh, Donnie Yen and who was supposed to be Yun Kei San, I guess, was the character. Uh, you know where uh, they closed the doors and um, you know students had to scramble up to the windows to see the fight. You know, um, people need to save face. Um, uh, this may be an offensive term, and I apologize to you uh, as an Asian and other Asians out there, but there is a phrase called guarding the rice bowl, right? Uh, protecting, protecting the rice bowl. You know, you don't want, you don't want to um, affect your source of income. Um, and, uh, you know, if you do anything that could, uh, you know, damage your source of income, you know, uh, it could financially devastate you. You, you, you get beat up in front of your students, where are your students going to go? You know, um, we have a very sort of uh, competitive, you know, society where it's like, you know, oh, I need to, I, I not only do, um, well, I probably never use this martial art in a fight, but the, the martial art that I study has to be by the best, most unbeatable Sifu. And um, it's strange because, you know, uh, when you're studying um, any sort of major in school, you know, in electrical engineering, you don't look for the most, the, the, the uh, you, you don't get taught physics by the guy who landed the Mars space rover on Mars. 
because frankly, okay. there's not just one person, right? But you don't, but you know, like if you, if you study just about any other field, you, 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 you tend to get students who learn from another student whose entire, you know, course of study was academic, right? But it's not those people that are putting the Mars rover on, on the, uh, you know, uh, on Mars. It's the people who are inspired to use the knowledge and take it to the highest levels. There's people like that. And then there's the people who like, you know, they take a, um, a college physics course and then, you know, the most physics they do after that is watch it on YouTube. So, you know, uh, there are two types there. There's many different types of, um, uh, of practitioners as there are uh, uh, teachers. You know, not everybody who learns MMA goes out and fights in MMA, right? Some people just do it because it's uh, how they, um, uh, you know, uh, how they spend their Sunday afternoon. I have a friend who's, um, you know, studying uh, kickboxing. Um, uh, I, I love kickboxing is a school in, in Manhattan. And I see him putting up all these great training videos and he has some good technique and I keep inviting him out to spar. He's like, oh no, we don't spar. You know, this, uh, I've never sparred. Uh, and I'm like, well, how, you know, how do you, you know, I don't want to judge what his path is, but his path is he's using it for exercise, right? He's, he's in great shape because he, kick, he, he trains like multiple times a week. He could probably kick somebody's butt, but, um, you know, uh, he doesn't know because like, he, you know, he doesn't spar. But who, who am I to say that, oh, if you don't go and, uh, you know, uh, spar, how do you know it works? Because that's not what his goal is. Right. Okay. So, so we're, we're jumping onto, you know, many different topics here. I think, <laughs> I think you're, you're, you're a bit excited about what you're talking about. So I think you're jumping from one topic to another topic to another topic. I think that they're all, they all have the common thread. Like you started the question, like, you know, why do you think that uh, teachers, you know, um, are less open? And it's because like, um, they, you know, uh, they just don't, they, they want, they want to save face. They don't want, uh, you know, right. their students to get hurt let's, or let's they don't want to get beat up. Let, let's yeah. pace ourselves. Let's break it down uh, on each block so we can focus on one thing and then we'll move on to the next. So teachers, Kung Fu teachers, well, you know, uh, there's probably other teachers from other martial arts styles as well, like, you know, Jiu Jitsu, Taekwondo, Karate, stuff like that. If you go in and, and, and challenge them, I'm sure they wouldn't do it in front of all of their students either. So I don't think it's exclusive to just Kung um, you know, maybe jujitsu, it'll be more common where it's like, oh, yeah, if you want to come open mat and roll or whatever, sign a waiver, then you, you, you will kind of roll in front of other people because you don't really have anything to be afraid of. Whereas I think with something like Kung Fu, as you mentioned, uh, not a lot of people spar or anybody that does Kung Fu would know this. There's not much sparring going on in Kung Fu, Kung Fu style, whatever, the training, so that it becomes a thing where it's like, okay, I'm just expected to learn from whoever my Sifu is and expect that, okay, he's got the knowledge, but he doesn't necessarily need to prove it. So then when outsiders come in and they do a thing like a, like a challenge, it's not common. It's like, okay, we're going to close the doors and like, we're going to have a one-on-one -on -one contest, but you can't tell anybody about it, which I think is, you know, it's, mm, I mean, it's kind of like half half it's like i think it's like half sort of like legitimate like okay yeah i do want to protect my business and we don't have to make this public knowledge it's like you know a friendly spar right yes there's that half of it but then there's also the other half is like okay well why are you so scared like why are you so insecure about you know your kung fu if, if you know you can't you're not going to let other people record it is what i'm saying so like yeah. I'd be I'd be lying if that if I said I oh no it's not that I'm sure there's that element to it. There, there there's uh you know people uh, we're human beings and there's ego involved in a lot of what we do so. And 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 for kung fu you know let's let's get right into the topic then is that for kung fu it seems like there's an overwhelming amount of that as opposed to like the second reason as opposed to the first reason second reason being like okay you know we don't really spar. I don't, I can't really prove that this works. I'm just kind of bullshitting most of my students. So you can't come here and spar me and put it on video or whatever, because it would embarrass me. Like, I find that most of the Kung Fu is geared towards that side. And maybe you can disagree or agree with it. Doesn't really matter if, if you agree or disagree. That's just sort of my perspective and my take on it. I don't know if you have anything to add to that. 
Um, only that, um, well, uh, clearly you're right. Um, it's demonstrable. Um, I, would, I would phrase it differently in that uh, there is that element. Um, the project that I have is just full of people who do want to spar. Um, for instance, the uh, Wing Chun MD guys in uh, DC um, started originally a sparring club in New York City before he moved to um, DC. And now he's setting up sort of a nationwide um, or a network of sparring clubs. Um, and he's a wing, and these are Wing Chun guys. Um, so um, there is also um, a couple of uh, different, like David Ross has uh, uh, the New York Sanda Club, which, um, you know, encourages people bringing in different martial arts styles to have, um, you know, sparring competitions. Um, let's, talk right there. let's talk about that right there. So sparring in Kung Fu, right? This is something that I have thought about in the last several months, you know, during COVID and everything. And, you know, from the Kung Fu sort of atmosphere that I see, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but like mm -hmm. basically 90% of Kung Fu teachers or 90% of Kung Fu schools, excuse me, don't actually spar. So when they actually do spar, they put on the gloves and the shin guards and whatever, and it just starts looking like whatever, hyper kickboxing, it starts looking like sand art, okay? So here's, here's where I have an opinion. Here's where I come in and I'm like, okay, you know, I, I have a background in a lot of different martial arts already. Karate, Taekwondo, Kung Fu, Jiu Jitsu, Muay Thai, boxing, whatever. So I'm looking at it from a different perspective, right? And maybe the rest of the followers, audience can, can hear me out on this one. Kung Fu guys, whatever, right? When you do Kung Fu, you know, doesn't matter what it is, Chuan Wing Chun, you know, Tong Ong Kun, Praying Mantis, whatever. And you get together and you spar, and you put on 16 ounce gloves and shin guards and, and, and headgear, and then you spar. That is sort of, in my opinion, sort of not exactly doing the Kung Fu that you were practicing already, like from, from, from your already what you're already practicing on a daily basis. You're, you're kind of transferring that into a different expression. It's like, now we're gonna fight full contact style. It's gonna be pick, pickboxing style with gloves and shin guards. So that makes it a little bit different. Like from my perspective, it's like, okay, yeah, for people that don't have fight experience, yeah, do that. Obviously you need to do that, right? You need to know what full contact fighting is feels like and looks like, and, and, you know? And that's what it's gonna look like. However, if we go deeper, if we go deeper and we really, you know, search for the true meaning of, you know, what these Kung Fu styles are meant to do and things like that, then putting them into a Sanda tournament, right? Putting them into a hybrid kickboxing model, sport model, might not be exactly fair for, you know, the Kung Fu people that are just studying Kung Fu for Kung Fu, if you are kind of following me. So the way I look at, let's say Wing Chun, for example, is like, what, what are the key, you know, good things that we're supposed to pick up from Wing Chun? It's, you know, the Sao, the sticking, right? The close contact, clinch fighting, inside fighting, things like that. And that's gloveless. That's not supposed to have 16 ounce gloves. If you're gonna put on boxing gloves, my opinion, if you're gonna put on boxing gloves and do Kung Fu, you don't have to do Wing Chun. You don't have to do uh, Choi Fat. You don't have to do Hong Ka. You don't have to do all that other stuff. If, you're, if your goal is to put on the boxing gloves and go fight Sanda, then just train Sanda. Just train kickboxing. You don't have to train Wing Chun to, to get there. You understand what I'm saying? But you're taking a longer path to get there. If, if your end goal is you're going to spar and you're going to fight full contact, you might as well just do Sanda, right? That, that's my take on it. But if you're going to do Wing Chun for Wing Chun, then there should be, and this is kind of gets into one of the points that I wanted to talk about today, is like, what you actually need is you actually need a regulated Wing Chun specific sport organization where all the rules are the same, all the regulations are the same, all the point scoring systems are the same, and then you, you, you sit together and you ask yourself, okay, what is good Wing Chun? How can I keep good Wing Chun principles but turn them into a sport? No, no, and actually let's back up. Why should we turn it into a sport in the, in the very beginning is because the first thing that we talked about was, oh, people don't spar. People don't 
you know, want to show their Kung Fu, stuff like that. So when you don't have a sport outlet for somebody to show their Kung Fu, guess what? They're just going to drop off. They're, they're going to be bored, right? They're going to learn it for a couple of years and they're going to be like, oh, there's nobody for me to, you know, spar with. There's nobody for me to test my Kung Fu with. So then, then you have this, you know, wild, wild west of the Kung Fu where it's like, Anybody can be a Kung Fu practitioner, right? You, you can say you've done it for five years. Some other guy can say they've done it for eight years. Some guy can, be, can say they've done it for 20 years, but you have no idea how good they actually are because none of them actually spar, so they don't know what their level is. My point with this is that if you want to spread Kung Fu, because, you know, Kung Fu is on a decline, let's not kid ourselves. No one really does Kung Fu seriously. No, no one really takes Kung Fu seriously. Anybody who has any, you know, athleticism anybody who has any kind of like goals higher goals of like doing well in a sport they wouldn't pick kung fu to start with because it's just the, 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 the quality level is so low right because it doesn't have you know good sports organizations you know set up and anything like that people would just go straight into boxing or people would just go straight into jiu-jitsu or whatever it's much more exciting there's much more competition you know it's taken much more seriously but going back to the kung fu for a second why should you have a regulated sport environment to actually help these Wing Chun people or whatever it is show off their style is because you don't, at least for me anyway, it doesn't make sense for me to put all these Wing Chun guys into a Sanda program and be like, all right, let's do Sanda. If you're going to do Sanda, you might as well just do, you know, if you might as well just study Sanda. So then you don't have to preserve the Kung Fu anymore, right? Wing Chun and Choi Lei Fat and, and, and Hong Ga and all that stuff, that's just going to be lost, lost in the time, right? The only use for that at that point is just the forms and you're practicing it for the art and a little bit of exercise and that's it because there's no application to it. Are you following? I know I have. A, I, um, so um, that was a lot to unpack. Um, I think the um, my TLDR sort of or TLDL uh, sort of answer is uh, that um, the dichotomy of Wing Chun is that it's both a principle-based system, yet people expect it to uh, be, uh, you know, contained within a box. I don't think it could be both. Um, in fact, I think it's it's the opposite. I think, um, you know, you can employ Wing Chun in um, uh, other contexts because, specifically because it's a, uh, it's a principle-based system. Um, you know, like the, uh, if I were to ask um, any um, what do you call it? Um, any well-versed practitioner, like what's the difference, you know, um, between Wing Chun and boxing? Now, remember, they, uh, in China, it's, um, I mean, my understanding is it's referred to as Southern Chinese boxing. Um, if you ask any well-versed Wing Chun practitioner, you know, what's the difference between, say, boxing and Wing Chun? The uh, primary answer is that when you, when you punch, you don't, you don't retract, right? In boxing, all the punches are snaps and then they, they, they come back for the guard, right? Um, in Wing Chun, the extended arm is the guard. Um, the extended arm is the bridge, right? So um, if you were to um, look at like Lomachenko or, you know, um, uh, I, there's, if you go on, online, there's tons and tons and tons of boxers who employ Wing Chun principles in boxing. I am in absolutely no way saying that these guys are doing Wing Chun there's a lot of people who look at Anderson Silva monkeying around with a, uh, what do you call it, a dummy, and they'll, they'll say, oh, look, he practiced, he's, you know, uh, studying Wing Chun. You know, um, I don't uh, equate just employing the principle as, you know, being a definitive example of the system. But I can say that, um, you know, with Wing Chun, um, since it is a principle-based system, um, you can put it in Sanda. And you can put it, you know, wrap it in gloves and, uh, you know, uh, shin guards, and it's still Wing Chun. All right. Um, so that, that's just my, that's my personal take on it, right? I, I agree with both. You know what? I'm 50-50. I'm I, I agree with both, right? Like, okay. if you are a high-level practitioner enough, right, if, if you're good enough, then it doesn't matter what style you study, right? Then, then when you express as a expressive as an outward expression then you should be able to deliver what you want out of it whether right. you are a taekwondo guy or whether you are a shaolin guy or whether you know what i mean yeah. then the outward expression is yes two people get into a fight people throw punches and kicks then yeah you should be able to express that and, and do what you want 
Yep. Uh, really, really quickly about that is that, um, you know, um, it has to be that way because um, um, I think a lot of people think of uh, martial, especially the uh, traditional Chinese martial arts, they expect it to look like a, a Shaw Brothers movie, right? Um, no fights in, real, in, in history has ever gone down like a Shaw Brothers movie. Fights are wild, chaotic. People are swinging. You know, it's, uh, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it, you know, it, it's chaos. And um, even with, um, what do you call it, um, your, uh, uh, when you stick to your principles, you know, if you want to survive in that chaos, you have to you sort of go with the flow, right? So if somebody's like swinging haymakers, you know, um, yeah, and you could just come barrel down with uh, chain punches, you know, you're probably going to get clocked uh, because you're not worrying about all the stuff that's over here. The stuff that's over here. Okay, I realize the webcam can't see my hands over here and over here, but uh, my hands are like to the right and left of me. But there's stuff over here that's dangerous, and you're coming in with a chain punch, and you might get one chain punch in, but then you get hit, uh, um, rocked with a hook. Right? Um, a fight, you have to you have to apply your principles in a fighting context, and if that means that okay, so I might have to do a bill sow just to you know uh, handle that uh, crazy hook, but then I could do something like that, you know, like my chain punch. You know, um, uh, uh, fights are going to look like the context of the fight. So, um, you know, if you're fighting in, uh, if you're, if you're doing Wing Chun and you're fighting a boxer, you know, frankly, it's going to look like, uh, it's going to look like um, uh, a boxing match. Why? Because, you know, the boxer is uh, doing a lot of footwork. You have to chase down the boxer. Um, how do you bridge the boxer if he's not giving you his hands? You know, you're going to jab, right? But you can't, you know, you can't just jab and just like, you know, ch chase down a guy like this. Come on, touch, touch my hand, t uh, connect, you know, I'm seeking the bridge, chum Q, right? You can't just do that, right? So um, if you look at any good, you know, uh, Wing Chun sparring, it's going to look like a boxing match until those brief moments where it's now in a Wing Chun context. Oh, there's a bridge here. So maybe like, okay, so he gave me his hand and he left there too long. I'm going to, you know, lop it and then hold like, you know, uh, control his hand while I, while I strike. Right. Uh, I'm going to give you a good example of this and then we can move on to the second part of your question about this point, the, uh, sports part of it. Um, if you want to see a good example of this, Ramsey Dewey, uh, uh frequently has, um, sparring matches with, uh, Choi Lee Foot, um, Wing Chun, and other traditional and hanga and other traditional Chinese martial artists, and you look at you look at them, and it looks like a fight. And then Ramsey Dooley would be like, "Oh wow, he did this weird thing where he, you know, um, he made a bridge and then controlled my hand, and then you, he explains all the the, the uh, TCMA that's in the sparring match. And then you, when he like rewinds the footage, he's like, oh look, there is the actual uh, traditional uh, Chinese martial arts in there, but it looked like it, um, during the sparring match, it looked like a, a you know just a couple of guys you know slap fighting or you know punching each other, right?" Um, so yeah, the, uh, it, since if, if traditional Chinese martial arts are principle-based systems, you should be able to use those principles in other contexts. Now, to your point about the um, the you know the the the, the uh, bringing the sports uh, like uh, part of it, um, that's something that's been attempted many times. There is a um, there's uh, at least in New York City there is a uh, annual uh, martial arts competition that tries to unite karate, uh, TK, TKD, um, Wing Chun, and a bunch of uh, there's there's a bunch of the the forms show offs and stuff which uh, you know it's uh, to preserve the heritage and stuff. But there's you know sparring uh, matches um, there. Uh, I think uh, it should be more regular. Like it, it, yeah, it, it it should be a more frequent thing. It shouldn't be like happening once a year. It should be like happening monthly <laughs> yeah yeah i and i agree and um to, to to that point is that um two things um i oh, no, to give you another example shannon moore who runs uh the columbia martial arts center in uh columbia maryland he's uh a student of william chung and uh he and some other people run a um uh, Kao Sao, I guess is what, it, what they call it. It's just, it's uh, a, um, a, um, a traditional Chinese martial arts uh, fighting competition. Um, there's a project that I'm involved with. Um, uh, Eleanor in the UK has uh, created, yeah, it's called the... Right yeah, he, uh, well, I mean, for, I mean, he's a fighter that uses Wing Chun. So it's like, you know, um, uh, and all of his fighters, you know, he trains fighters in Wing Chun. Uh, they, they're not just Wing Chun guys, they're martial artists, uh, but Wing Chun is one of the tools that they use. Um, he has a project called the Wing Chun Trinity, and it's specifically what you said, which is, you know, um, 
It's uh, trying to strip away the nonsense of, you know, well, this is not how I do my Wing Chun. My seafood says this is the real Wing Chun and this is why we do it. And it's like, well, then nobody will ever be able to touch hands with each other. And only the uh, only when it's a, a death match will you ever be able to fight each other. And that's not, you know, that, 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 that's just uh, that's not realistic. Um, Alan Orr's project is um, uh, the, the Trinity uh, project has a set of uh, rules of how to um uh, do a Wing Chun Chi Sao um, points based competition. Um, it's not. With those rules. I, I oh, you so you read video. the rules? Yeah. Yeah, I watched his video. So let, let me let me give you my take on it, right? Like, yep. what Alan Orr's doing is is exactly what I have in mind. I'm like, yes, here's a guy that understands what I'm mm. talking about. He's like, back to the topic of like, you know, why people do kung fu, and then once they go out and try and use it and fight with it it's like why is it so different and it goes back to the point of like me saying well you know if you're just gonna do kickboxing then just do kickboxing or if you do sanda then just do sanda right why do the wing chun like why keep that alive well what's good about the wing chun right so then alan Orr has the right idea he's like i'm going to try and showcase to people what are the good things about wing chun is the trapping and the sticking and the you know the sticky hands right the clinch yeah. fighting range right and his rule sets is like okay no pot shots no sniper shots so if you're if you're if two people are detached from each other and one guy just throws a punch from the outside or one guy throws a kick from the outside it doesn't count because it's not yeah. Wing Chun that's basically just boxing or kickboxing right yeah, so the points are very constrained into, yeah, to actually show the, because like, if you just throw like random shots, it doesn't work. But uh, his his uh, rules were specifically to uh, encourage um, multiple strikes, three combinations. Three hit combo strikes from the inside. Exactly. Uh, you know, like a kick block and a punch or a click punch and then a clinch, then that would, you know, win the round or that would win the point. So I think systems like that, need to be implemented not just for Wing Chun but for all these other traditional Chinese martial arts because back to the original topic they are not going to survive with modern times when other people have better things to do right when other people have better sports to get into right they're like you know families put their children in karate or families put their kids in Taekwondo because hey, they have something to work towards. You know, they can go to a competition, they can score a couple of points, they can win a, win a gold medal, you know, they can get their green belt. You know, they, it makes them feel good about themselves. It's like an achievement thing. And you need that in modern times in order for people to keep up with it or else people are not going to do it. The young people don't go and study Kung Fu because it's too boring. It's like, okay, you're going to do this stance, you know, and then you're going to do your forms, you know, for two years or whatever it is, right? You're not going to get, you're not, you're not ever going to throw a single punch, right? Most young people are just not going to have that patience. They're going to be like, okay, my third month into Kung Fu, I didn't get to punch somebody in the face yet. I'm not going to do this. I'm just going to go do jujitsu right. or so, do, Mu do Muay Thai or something, right? Yeah, right? It's only, it's only like, okay, the older crowd, okay, maybe after 30, after 40, after 50, whatever it is they don't have that angst in them anymore you know they don't have that youthful angst in them anymore they don't have to prove anything they're not out there to compete and fight and they're not trying to get their teeth knocked out you know they, they, they don't have that in them anymore so then they want to do something more peaceful they want to do something more spiritual more meditative or whatever then they come and find the kung fu and they're like oh this is nice i can work on my techniques I can work on my stances, I can work on my forms, and I'm at peace with myself. I don't have to go out there and punch people. And it's just different crowd, you know, will cater to a different interest. I, I get that, I understand that. That's why we have so many different martial arts, right? You know, if you like dancing, you know, you probably want to do capoeira. Right? Yeah, <laughs> if, yeah. you, if you are like hardcore and you want to hurt people, you probably want to do Muay Thai, you, want to talk about, you probably want to do Kyokushin Karate, right? Where you can really kick people's skulls. You know, so I, I understand that there's going to be different martial arts and different tastes, right? People have different tastes, so they're going to they're cater to that. They're going to they're going to go go for what they want. Um, not to go on a rant, but yeah, going so. Back, is there anything you want to add to that? Um, I don't want to add it because uh, you know it's it's uh, you know. Uh, 
not much I want to add to that. Uh, what I do want to do is take a break. And uh, we do have people who are watching. Um, we have a bunch of my friends, a bunch of the guys who've shown up to the Wing Chun Brotherhood uh, um, events in New York City. We have uh, David Moshi, who's, uh, you know, uh, he's a Chushang Tin student. We have uh, Mike Martino, who's uh, a traditional Wing Chun, though I think he recently started doing stuff with A.D. Gray. Uh, who's a Nip Ching student. Um, and we have uh, Sifu, Mark Williams, who was one of the first people who was involved with the Wing Chun Brother Project. Uh, he was like uh, part of the first meetups. So, you know, uh, people all, you know, uh, you know, out there and saying hi. A um, couple of disagreements, you know, like uh, that's, that's, you know, this is not, we're not, uh, you know, this is not a, we're not solving world peace here. We're just uh, having a discussion. Like um, one of, the, can you hear me? You pointed to yours. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, he, uh, so, you know, obviously people have differing opinions. I think one of the things that, uh, you know, uh, Mark had said, unfortunately I closed it, was that, uh, you know, it was uh, that uh, martial arts is a, an old system and now we're trying to, you know, we're in a modern world. And uh, I think that's where some of the differences uh, of opinion may come, come about. I can talk about that. I can talk about that. Go ahead. I would, I would love to talk about this. Um, so, I, and, and I know there's going to be a lot of Kung Fu guys, right, watching this, right? They're, they're going to be saying, and, and, I and I love hearing this, by the way, and I, I don't mean it in a bad way, but I love it when I hear this. There, you'll get a bunch of Kung Fu guys, they'll come on. Oh, by the way, I, I want to preface this by saying I love Kung Fu. I love Kung Fu for everything that it is, right? I do Kung Fu. I understand the cultural things behind Kung Fu the values, the morals, and everything like that. I, I love all of Kung Fu. I'll just preface that. But I will get into this now. People will say, well, Kung Fu back in the day, you know, hundreds of years ago, whatever it is, oh, it was invented for combat. It was invented to kill. It was invented, you know, as a, as a martial art, as a, uh, you know, military martial art. We use it to kill. My answer to that is, hey, that's great. That's great that you know you do your kung fu to kill and everything like that. However, we are now living in the modern times. We're not living in you know samurai age, or we're not living in the farmer age where it's like, okay, you got bandits coming into your farm. You need to get your farm tools ready, and you got to kill them. Okay, we're we're not in that age anymore where we're doing that. That that's probably not going to happen. Right, ninety-nine percent of people that are practicing martial arts right now will probably not come across a violent situation in their life. Um, that's just how how the numbers goes. Is if, if it's like ten million people that practice kung fu, probably not all ten million people are going to find themselves in a real fight. Probably, you know, the number is probably much lower than that. My point being is, we're in modern times now, where people are practicing martial arts mostly for hobby an interest, exercise, right? And as a sport. So if, 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 let me get back to the Kung Fu guys for, for a second. If your reasoning for Kung Fu, that, like, like you're, if you're saying like, oh, Kung Fu shouldn't evolve with the modern times and, you know, we shouldn't put on gloves and we shouldn't put on protective gear and spar and show that our Kung Fu works, you know, cause my Kung Fu is too deadly. You know, I'll hit you with one hand and you, you know, you will, you will, you will die if I hit you with one hand. It's like, okay, most of us, that, that stuff, like most people, when they say that, I can't take them seriously because here, here's the, here's the truth. Here's the reality. Most people that say that cannot produce a video of themselves actually doing something like that with any reliable evidence, right? And, and we're going to get into the, 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 the meat of this you know, podcast now is like, I call these people, and, and with all due respect when I say this, right, with all due respect when I say this, I call these people Kung Fu philosophers, or, or maybe using the word Kung Fu geeks, maybe, you know, would be the, would be the word to use, is you, majority of the time, you'll get these Kung Fu guys and they say like, oh, you know, my my qigong is way too strong for you you know i'm gonna i'll break your arm like this and i'll jab you in the eye like this and i'm like hey that's cool that's great i'm sure you could do it but can you just show me that you could do it can, can do you have some evidence and and nine times out of ten it's like okay i can't produce any reliable evidence so you're just gonna have to believe me 
And and for for a modern martial artist such as myself, who also has a traditional martial arts base, I like I love all of that. Don't don't get me wrong. I love all the traditional martial arts. I do traditional martial arts. I advocate for traditional martial arts. I advocate for kung fu every single day. But when someone says that, I'm like, okay, as a modern martial artist who spars regularly with people from different disciplines, jiu-jitsu, wrestling, boxing, Muay Thai, whatever, Sancho, I'm like, okay, well, you still have to show it. You can't just say that you can, you can do it and I'm just going to believe you. Like, you still have to show it. And then for a lot of these Kung Fu, you know, masters or these Kung Fu guys, whenever they do take a video of themselves and they post it online, unfortunately, it looks really bad. And, and that's most cases. I'm, I'm, and I don't want to sugarcoat this, right? And, and I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for it. I'm, I'm going to get a lot of hate for it. But most of the time, they'll upload the videos and they're not really showing what they say they think, what they say they can do. And that's a problem. I think there's a disconnect there. So uh, really quickly, so that since you took a pause to breathe, um, I 99% agree with you, maybe 90, somewhere in the high 90s agree with you. Um, so uh, I invited you, basically, uh, you're like my, my uh, new best friend. I invite you to all the new, hot new Wing Chun forums. Uh, there's always a new one springing up. Um, I invited you to one last night. Um, and one of the things, I, places I brought you into was uh, Wing Chun Fighters. It's a Facebook uh, page for those who aren't there. Um, and the sort of prerequisite is that uh, people who actually, the only people we allow are people who are in, actively involved in training. No fans, no posts of it, man. It's just people who fight. And, um, you know, it brought you in there because you clearly, you know, you have a fighting background. And um, the inception of the group... There's a what, bunch of people in there, or even yeah, you know. I know, like, I know, I know, I know. Well, so in any event, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Yeah, let me finish. Right, so right. The, the whole point of the original group was um, it was created by uh, somebody named Anthony Iglesias, and uh, his thing was you know um, you know he's he was tired of uh, all the Chi Sao videos. He was tired of all the uh, you know people doing the Silum Tao because like you know uh, Wing Chun is only about the Silum Tao, and um, uh, he got you know was tired of like the sort of like the uh, all of the uh, com compliance form videos that were out there. So uh, he eventually got tired of um, uh, internet politics and uh, dropped out, almost deleted the group. But we were like, nope, this is a good group here. Let's, uh, you know, he got the uh, torch passed down to Jason Malik. Malik, Malik. Um, he um, so Jason took it over, brought me in, and some other people as mods. And uh, you know, we're trying to surface just you know good Wing Chun, and uh, you know, we do allow some. See who's to post there, you know. Anyway, um, it's sort of diluted lately because of COVID nineteen. There's not a lot of people fighting each other, uh, frankly, uh, in the past uh, four months. But um, you know, before that, I thought it was, you know, it, 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 there was a lot of what you were talking about. There was a lot of people actually, um, you know, actually demonstrating real Wing Chun. And uh, even then, you're gonna find the uh, the philosophers um, waxing poetically about, you know, your uh, form, you know, like the bonsai at the wrong angle oh you know if you did this i would destroy you and i'm like yeah so this is where i do agree with you which is like you know what there's a lot of words being talked but there's also a lot of people showing their action you know uh talk less fight more but you know uh like uh, i basically i did stop speaking to some of the people who were just you know um uh what do you call it uh just uh constantly just saying words and not putting up any of their own videos you know uh i put up my own videos do I think they're the uh, prime example of Wing Chun? No, I'm a four-year student. So that I'm not, it's going to be a long time before my Wing Chun looks like the Ip Man movies. Um, but um, that was a joke. He's supposed to laugh. But, um, you know, it's going to be a long time before, like, uh, I consider myself, a, you know, sort of like the, uh, you know, um, Wing Chun worthy of, uh, you know, demonstration. But um, at least I'm putting it up there. A lot of the people who were commenting don't put anything up there. And that's to your point. It's like, you know, why, why, why go through all the trouble of, you know, saying something is wrong when you could just be showing how you do it right. And there's very little of that. Is why, which is why it all comes full circle. You understand what my point is now with, okay, Kung Fu requiring some sort of a sport body, some sort of a regulatory body. It's not because we don't like the TCMA. It's not like we don't want to keep the traditional part of the, you know, Chinese Kung Fu. 
it's not because of that. It's because there's too much bullshit. There's too much people going out there saying that, okay, I'm, I'm, you know, doing the forms and I'm carrying on the traditions and, you know, I've done it for eight years and I've done it for 15 years. Like it, like it doesn't matter because without a sport regulatory body, you could say anything you want and you can't prove that you're right. Or rather, right. no one else can prove that you're wrong. So then and what you just said just answered what uh, David, somebody just said, literally said, if you're going, uh, what criteria are we judging Good Wing Chun by? And what you just said is how we would do that. Uh, you didn't realize you were answering his question, then you just did. Oh, yeah. So, uh, but somebody so, also said, let me, uh, I think it's an important point to bring up and I just lost it. But uh, somebody had also said, we were talking about the, uh, the teachers and, um, you know, good Wing Chun and stuff. And somebody said, yeah, but they're old and they, they sort of lost their skills or something like that. And um, that's uh, half valid. Um, look at, uh, valid, look at, maybe. look at how old was Ip Man when he, when he was teaching Bruce Lee? He was in his 60s. All right. So where did Bruce Lee get his skill from? Well, the skill was in Bruce Lee. Ip Man didn't say, like, you know, take Bruce Lee, who was a complete invalid, and all of a sudden became one of the world's greatest martial artists, right? Um, <clears throat> well, no, I know, I know, I know. I'm not, I'm not gonna, we're not gonna go into history. The, 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 the overwhelming, the overarching point is that um, skill is handed down, be it uh, by uh, principles expressed as words and action so i don't have to tell you that you know um well or it should be because some people take it to the extreme example where it's like your bonk style must be 45 degree angle right that's not uh transferring skills the uh a good teacher will um will uh, you know, take a diamond in the rough, the skills are already in there, and then uh, eke them out through uh, training, okay? So um, similar like to, like to what I said earlier, where a, um, a college physics professor may not have landed the Mars rover on uh, the moon, but um, the, the, the guy, uh, you know, acquiring the knowledge from this TA assistant, who is probably where he's getting most of his, um, you know, knowledge from, you know, uh, is uh, going to give him the foundation he needs to go and uh, cultivate those skills into something that does something amazing, like, you know, uh, create the Bose-Einstein condensate or, condensate or, you know, uh, get, uh, send the Voyager spacecraft outside of our, uh, you know, galaxy, right? Those physicists get their knowledge from work words expressed as, you know, uh, principles expressed as words. I don't think um, uh, the fighting art is any different. Now, the thing is, the same way these, uh, you know, uh, we had many different, uh, you know, uh, machines before we had the Voyager, like people have to hone their craft through practice and, you know, ex experimentation. And that's where, you know, Chi Sao, that's where sparring and all that other stuff come in, come into play. That's what sh sh sharpens the knives. But, you know, um, um, until you have that information, you know, um, it doesn't matter where you get that, you're getting that information from. You can get the information from a 60 year old Ip Man or a 30 year old Wang Sheng Lung. Um, uh, arguably, Wang Sheng Lung will probably heighten your uh, reaction reflexes more than Ip Man, but the, the, the principles come from the, you know, a, a 60 year old uh, gentleman who has the, you know, cancer manifesting through its body and uh, can probably only, uh, you know, train for a couple hours, uh, hours in a day, right? So even though uh, somebody is like, is, is losing their ability to lift their leg high enough to kick, they could still teach somebody what that person needs to do in, uh, to experiment to, you know, hone their skills. Right. right. I, I agree with that. So one more thing I want to add before we jump on to the next thing. And uh, anybody that's listening, feel free to hop in with your comments, uh, uh, hop in with your uh, questions, right? And we'll, we'll, we'll try and get to it. The one thing I want to add to that sport aspect of it is that I don't want it to be so sportified <clears throat> that it then loses what Wing Chun or what Kung Fu actually is about, right? I don't want it to be so turned into a sport, and I'm going to use TKD as, as an example, because TKD right. has has gone down the, the path of, you know, just not not the right path, okay? So, and even in the 60s, point scoring karate was like, you know, useless. I mean, there was, you know, uh, you're basically aiming like an inch away from somebody's face. And then that's why, you know, kickboxing came about is because point scoring karate was just useless. Right, right. And, and, and I, 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 let, me, let me speak on that just a little bit. So um, Taekwondo, when it turned into a sport, it still kept the good things about Taekwondo and it still... Um, exemplified and pushed it to the highest, you know, 
uh, zenith that it could be, which is extremely fast case. You know, beautiful, lethal speed and, and, and precision and accuracy with the kicks, right? Now it's gone downhill because they turned the whole sport into an electronic uh, score based system so that it no, you no longer have to throw kicks and hurt people with it. You don't, you, don't, you don't have to knock people up with it anymore. You just touch people with your kick and it counts as an electronic point. So, so Taekwondo has gone downhill into the dark, you know, into the dark zone. So, to, you know, and I don't want that to be like, okay, yeah, this is, that, this is the path that, you know, Wing Chun Kung Fu needs to go down. That's not what I'm saying. Don't sportify it to the point where it no longer has a martial application, where it just becomes a game, right? But at the same time, there needs to be a comfortable middle ground where it's like, you know, you've got people all the way on the left side where that's like, we don't do any sparring at all. So it's make-believe land, it's LARPer land, it's live action role-playing land. It's like, if I say I'm a Kung Fu master, you believe that I'm a Kung Fu master. Like seriously, all you guys are just LARPers, live action role-players, okay? And then you have guys that are all the way on the other end of the extreme. It's like, oh, I'm a T-Cell champion. Okay, let's look at what your T-Cell criteria is, right? And then we look at your T-Cell competition footage and it's like, oh, you're putting on a helmet you're putting on 16 ounce gloves and all you did was jab the guy in the face. That's not T-cell. That's just you jabbing a guy in the face and you happen to be a T-cell champion. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah. don't go to any either of the end of the extreme because both are bad. There needs to be something in the middle where it's like, okay, it's realistic. It's still Wing Chun. It's still no gloves, but you're doing T-cell and you're getting the points that you needed to do and it's good Wing Chun. There needs to be that middle ground, and we'll, that's basically what, what I'm saying. Um, let's look at some of the co uh, options. Uh, sorry, comments. Yeah. Here. So one. So I, I miss. Uh, it's, it's sort of an irrelevant point. Um, some I might have misinterpreted what somebody saying about the uh, what I interpreted as a um, an old teacher losing a skill, and uh, the the other way to interpret that was you know um, the system lost its knowledge. Uh, there is probably some of that. <clears throat> um, you know, uh, when you hand down information, you know, uh, you know, um, most schools uh, pass down the information as tribal knowledge. Like there's like um, if you ask any any school, maybe the uh, the grandmaster like William Chung probably has DVDs out there. Benny Meng probably has DVDs out there. Eleanor has DVDs out there. Uh, Robert Chu has a book. Some people have books and some schools have just the knowledge passed down from, you know, grand, grandmaster to master to seafood students. So, you know, it is possible that some of that information um, just like fell out of the brain. So like um, th there is some of that where pe where knowledge gets lost. And that might have been the other way that uh, to interpret what that person said. Uh, um, and so the way uh, there is no cure for that. The only cure would be like uh, get rid of lineages and have one uh, united Wing Chun thing. And the second you do that, there'll be a fork of it because like they, there's a political disagreement. That'll just never happen. So Wing Chun is just what it is. I'm sure like uh, I actually Ramsey Dewey um, had a recent video where uh, he said that um, uh even karate, there's a lot of that. Like uh, he mentioned that something where, you know, there was a movement where like, uh, like uh, well, why do you come back to the center? And it has to do with like, uh, nobody knows why they practice the punch in a certain way. And he's like, well, that's an arm bar. You know, you know, but teachers don't teach that because there's a lot of stuff that people just like take in the forms and have sort of like uh, forgotten the context. And because it's not written down, it's, you know, lost to ether. So, you know, so he is somewhat right about that. All right, you get you to look for something else. Uh, I think we touched on most points. Um, I, I see some comments, you know, and and, and I'm just going to quickly just uh, agree with them. Uh, you know, BJJ, you know, they 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 do guard pulling, which is not very realistic to the real martial art. Yes, I I, I agree with that. Uh, you know, judo change the way its rules are, so you don't grab the legs in order to retain the judo, right? Um, and, 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 you know, so there are certain kind of compromises that you have to make in the sport in order to keep the style what it is and in order to push practitioners to continue to practice those techniques because you want to keep the style to what it is, right? And and there, that's a fair point. And, and I actually think there's a reason why they do that. And I, I some people might disagree. Some, some people might be like, nah, it should be like, you know, judo should be like any kind of throws. 
I, I get it. I get it. It should be right, but but that's like street style, street style, you know, judo. It's like okay, throwing people, tossing them on the head, and you know, giving them a concussion. I get it. That's that's the street style judo. But in order for the judo to flourish, just like in order for the Wing Chun to flourish, you need to be able to set up a certain amount of rules in play that is universally recognized that this is good Wing Chun, and then you stick with it and 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 you protect it in that way. But you just don't want to go all the way to the extreme where it's like okay. You can't throw head kicks. You can't uh, wrestle. You can't blah 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 blah. Then, then okay. Then you're practicing something else. But yep. I, I still argue though that you want to keep Wing Chun separate from Sanda because I still think if you're gonna do Sanda, just do Sanda. Like if you're gonna do Wing Chun, there should be a sport specific Wing Chun where you can actually be good at it, and it's not a joke, right? Like like it's not some kind of joke where it's like a T cell competition and you're jabbing the guy in the face with a boxing jab. Like it. it it shouldn't be like that. Yeah, and this uh, is where, if we were talking about it in the forum, I'd be pasting the little uh, taco, uh, El Paso taco commercial where the little girl says, why don't we do both? Because it's like, uh, yeah, you know, there should be a Wing Chun specific thing. Somebody asked you if you did any Trinity rules. Um, I'm going to take a segue and say that um, my Wing Chun Brotherhood beatups, uh, we did do um, a couple of rounds of the Trinity rules. Um, so I guess when you do when you do your own, you try to... Good. Um, but like, uh, yeah, um, do Wing Chun at the Chi Sao meetups, do, um, you know, Wing Chun sparring at your, you know, uh, Wing Chun sparring meetups, go to sparring meetups, like, uh, the Wing Chun MD, uh, sparring, uh, what's it called? Uh, I'm losing it. Sparring labs, uh, not Wing Chun labs, sparring, uh, what's the name of Mike Spate's project? Uh, sparring club. Sorry, I was so bad. Sparring club. Go to the sparring club club and try your Wing Chun against JKD and, uh, you know, Taekwondo and uh, Hung Ga. You know, try your Wing Chun in every context. Uh, don't constrain, handcuff yourself to just doing Wing Chun at Wing Chun. Go to bring your Wing Chun to a Sanda competition. But um, if, it, w if what matters to you is that you're expressing your Wing Chun uh, the way it's supposed to be expressed, you know, um, then stick to your uh, principles. If you start like throwing like, you know, uh, elbow up punches, well, then think, you ask yourself why, you know, what is it about my Wing Chun that uh, I can't, uh, you know, um, counter um, somebody in a different system without uh, weakening my own system. Why am I falling into these bad habits that you're supposed to train out of yourself? But uh, take your Wing Chun to all the places and try to make your Wing Chun work in all the contexts. Right. So we're heading into the one hour mark. I don't know if the Instagram we're done. will, will it ended. drop off. It did. It did. It I got the did. last word in. <laughs> if you, Yeah, it did. I think I got the last word in. It just said stop. Start part two. Yeah, we can start part two. So you have to go and give me the key. Go, go do the key thing. Okay, because uh, actually, how about you start it? <laughs> all right, all right, uh, I could start it. Uh, I understand why. Eight masters and kung fu. Let's talk about it. Uh, this is where our opinions uh, diverge, like a river, a fork in the road, or uh, you know, a river. Um, <clears throat> you don't know what I'm about to say yet, so you can't I do. disagree with it. I, I, I think I know what you're going to say. Look. Um, uh, and I've said, I've probably used this analogy a couple of times where they're diff basically the long and short of it is there are many different types of masters and there are many different types of, um, what do you call it? Uh, practitioners. And, uh, the question is what different, what differentiates them from me, one another. And I guess what differentiates them, um, is, uh, what their goal is. The goals are, and you know, uh, yeah, the goals and purpose. Like, what is a uh, somebody showing up to class expect to get out of the class? Uh, there, there's the person who like uh, who's looking for self confidence and is just look, looking to acquire a skill. There's the person who's like overweight and just wants to lose some weight. And then there's the kid who likes to like uh, who has uh, too much energy and is trying to you know, tame that sort of like uh, unbound energy. And then there's like the fighter who's like trying to fight. Now, even when those people now when those people learn the skills, now they know that let's say they all every single one of them knows the uh, syllabus and knows the curriculum, right? They know uh, what Wing Chun is and they know how to teach it. 
And as a master, it's like, okay, well, this guy is, um, you know, um, I'm not going to say which is which, but this guy knows, uh, is, is very good at articulating a, a point. So he's somebody I want to make a teacher because he can, you know, propagate the knowledge. And uh, this guy, you know, uh, he has some of it, um, you know, some of the knowledge, he, uh, he has all the knowledge, but he's not very necessarily uh, good at, um, he doesn't have the patience to spend the time that it takes to propagate the knowledge, right? Um, some of these people become the actual teachers of the system, right? So um, it's not a given that somebody who ha who has the knowledge well enough to go into a fighting context, not you know lose their nerve and get the you know uh, crap kicked out of them. Um, they may not be the best representative of fighting the system, but they have the knowledge that they can then propagate to the next fighter. That person who you know is not a fighter may be the best person in of the, the group of people that i mentioned earlier that can propagate the knowledge to a fighter who will then better represent the system and I whether agree, it's I, I agree with you half okay. i agree with you halfway and my answer might surprise you which is mm -hmm. why you might want to listen to my answer first i will you, you you agree with it go ahead, so go ahead, my, go ahead. My, my answer might surprise you so i i agree with pretty much most of what you said uh, you know, in the beginning, right? And people, you know, give me crap all the time when I talk about Kung Fu or when I share Kung Fu things, uh, you know, MMA guys and whatever, right? They, you know, they give me crap too. They're like, oh, you know, this shit doesn't work. Like, why are you, you know, talking about it? Or why are you posting about this or blah, blah, blah. And, and I always tell them, I'm like, hey, you know, not everybody does martial arts to be, you know, uh, an MMA fighter or a cage fighter or UFC fighter or whatever. Some people are doing it as a hobby. Some people are doing it for the workout. Some people are doing it as an interest in the actual martial art, maybe the historical side, maybe the philosophical side, right? And some people are actually quite serious about it and they want to like use it for self-defense or they use it, you know, in a fight or whatever it is, right? That, that's quite general. Like that, that is not exclusive to Kung Fu. That is any martial art, right? Now, with that said, why is it that with, and we'll just use Chinese Kung Fu because this is the topic, right? Why is it that with Chinese Kung Fu, the numbers are so much more lopsided? And what I mean by that is, you're supposed to have an even number of people, right? Let's say if a million people did Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Okay, I'm just going to use BJJ as an example. Just it's a good example popular. to use. Yep. It's the most popular example, right? If a million people did BJJ and a million people did Wing Chun, I'm not going to sit here and lie to myself and be like, hey, you know what? The one million people that did Wing Chun the way that it is taught now, the same number of those Wing Chun people will be at the same level as the same number of people that are going to be in Jiu Jitsu. That's, that's not true. That's just not going to be true. And, and what I mean by that is, if I take a Wing Chun blue belt, whatever the equivalent of that is, like maybe one or three years of training in Wing Chun, and I put him in whatever, in a freestyle, all rules, any, anything is allowed, self-defense scenario, with a guy that's done BJJ for one to three years, the average person, right? And I'm talking about if everything was average, right? They're both, both average people. Yeah, picking put randomly, them, yeah. But picking at random, right? Put them together, okay? Based on numbers, based on logic, based on percentages, okay? The way that Wing Chun is taught versus the way that BJJ is taught, most, uh, most likely, and this is coming from experience. I'm not saying this because I'm a LARPer. I'm not saying this because I'm a live action role player. I'm saying this through experience that, okay, the way that BJJ is trained is more practical, is more effective. They, they actually spar, they actually roll. They know how to actually use their techniques. They may not be the greatest fighter on earth and no one's saying that they are, but they'll probably drag the Wing Chun guy down at some point and get on top of them and make their life hell and probably submit them. Most likely, right? Now, why why is that? Well, let's dive into why, right? And this is this is where it gets into the the, the, the area where you know where I'm only fifty percent agreeing with you, right? Because I'm like, okay, different people have different goals, 
Sure, we can all admit that. Everybody has different goals. Even even people going into jujitsu, they have different goals, right? It could be moms and dads trying to lose weight, right? It could be kids that are six year old trying to learn the basics of you know body coordination, right? But you know, where is it in the system? Where is it in the style where kung fu fails to be effective at a you know in a, in a very general sense, whereas something like BJJ, for example is gonna be much higher in terms of efficiency and effectiveness, other than the main difference is how they're being practiced. How they're being practiced. And and, and I wanna talk about, you know, and, and you know, let, let's get into this and we're, we're, we're gonna get into the whole conversation, you know, with fake masters and everything. When, pe when people are talking about Kung Fu, and like, like I said, for people who are joining us just now, maybe who hasn't watched part one or whatever, I'm a Kung Fu guy. I love Kung Fu. I love everything about Kung Fu. And I'll keep saying that. I'll, I'll keep saying that so that everybody knows. I love Kung Fu. I do Kung Fu. But I wish that Kung Fu didn't have such a crappy reputation for the average person that, that you know, in, in modern times, right? We're talking about in modern times. I'm not talking about 200 years ago when, you know, MMA didn't exist and BJJ didn't exist and whatever. Then, then back then it was like, oh, you know, Kung Fu or Jiu Jitsu, like Japanese Jiu Jitsu or Aikido, like that was like the top of echelon, you know? Nowadays, martial arts has evolved so much in the last 20 years. It's like, okay, when you talk about what really works for fighting and self-defense, you're not gonna meet another guy on the street that does Wing Chun. He's not going to attack you Wing Chun style. You understand what I'm saying? He's going to attack you for whatever the frick he knows, which is probably not Wing Chun, which is probably wild haymakers left and right, right? He's going to bulldoze you. He's going to he's going to shoot into you, tackle you. You're going to end up on the ground. Then what are you going to do then, right? So the way that the Kung Fu is being taught, it's stuck in a certain era. It, it's stuck in, in, in a certain time era. That it, that it was before, like it was designed for what it was used, you know, 100 or 200 years ago when there was no boxing gloves, no headgear, right? They're just doing bare knuckle, right? They want to protect their hands. They want to protect their face. They, 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 they punch the body, right? They do low kicks. They kick the knees, right? They're, 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 they're in the alleyways. They're trying to protect themselves in the alleys. They're trying to stand on a boat while somebody's trying to attack them, you know? There's a specific reason why the Kung Fu style was designed for what it was designed for. But you have to understand that that's a very specific scenario and that was effective for a time. For a time. And if you were to take that Kung Fu and place it into the modern age now, it's like, hey, do Kung Fu like you did 200, 300 years ago, but try and do it now. Most of the times it just doesn't add up. It just doesn't work because a lot of people have evolved past that point already. They're like, okay, we don't punch and kick like that anymore. We've got gloves now. We've got mouth guards now. We punch full power. We kick full power. We take people down. We do ground and pound. We do submissions. Anything can happen. So now you're facing a modern fighter who has done, you know, you know, 12 rounds of sparring every week or whatever, 20 rounds of sparring every week. And they know how to pump the jab. They know how to pump the right cross. They know how to kick your leg all these kinds of things so the kung fu then becomes a thing where it's like a replica not a replica it, it's a relic of the of the past it's a relic you know you're practicing in a way that is what fighting was maybe 50 100 years ago or 200 years ago but you're not bringing that to the modern age where it's like okay people don't fight like that anymore you know what i mean so you 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 mentioned like okay yeah what is the litmus test or what is you know, what, what is what is the level uh, that that you need to be for for you to you know have good kung fu? And I think that I think the answer to that is so simple. I think the answer to that is so simple. In order for you to have good kung fu, I don't think it's enough for you to say that hey, I have good kung fu. I know the forms. I know the techniques. I know the posture. I know the structure. And I know all of that, except when it comes into reality, when I try to take the Kung Fu and I place it into modern day and all of that falls apart, then for me, I don't think that's good Kung Fu. Because 
essentially what you're telling me is, what you're saying to me is, you've lost everything that Kung Fu was supposed to be about, which is a martial art, right? For martial application, for war, for fighting. What you're telling me is, hey, I'm okay with the fact that you're practicing Kung Fu just as a form of art, just as a dance, right? If, if you as a Kung Fu teacher, you tell me, you're like, hey, I'm gonna be okay with you if you did Kung Fu and it's just a dance. In my opinion, you've lost everything that was supposed to be about Kung Fu, which is about killing people, about protecting yourself, about self-defense, except you can't do any of that. Because you come up against a modern fighter, they're going to punch you in the face, and then you're going to be left wondering, oh my god, my Tan Sao wasn't high enough, my Bong Sao wasn't like this, I couldn't block him, you know, everything falls apart because you don't spar. You don't spar, so then it's just, you're doing just forms, you know. You're, you're, you're in make-believe land. You're like in Ip Man land, where you're like, you know, hey, this was how Wing Chun was 200 years ago, and I'm I'm fighting guys with the chain punch like this. You know, you're, you're in movie land, right? That, that's my criticism, right? It's, it's like, come on, guys. Come on, Kung Fu people. Let's get with reality here. Like, I love the Kung Fu. Don't get me wrong, I love the Kung Fu, but you can't tell me with a straight face that you're a Kung Fu master and you're Kung Fu Sifu, and I say, okay, you wanna you wanna touch hands, you wanna spar, and then all of a sudden, you know, uh, your kung fu isn't really there. It can't be done, right? I'm not, I'm not and I'm not saying that's all kung fu teachers, but I'm saying there's a lot out there, right? You know, you're talking about 70, 80 percent, maybe even 90 percent, right? They're out there, and and they're like, well, my kung fu's too lethal, you know. And it's just like, okay, you know, sure. Like, you know, you're, 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 you're in that zone, you're in that LARPer zone, that live action role playing zone where it's like, okay, I, kn I think it works, but you know, I, I can't, I can't say for certain that it'll work. Yep. So you're, you're, you're make believe land. So anyway, that's, that's my problem with it. So I only agree halfway when you're talking about, okay, passing it down the art, passing down the art. Yes. There's a difference between a fighter who can use the Wing Chun, right? And there's a difference between a teacher who can teach the Wing Chun. I agree with that. The best fighter is not necessarily the best teacher, and the best teacher is not necessarily the best fighter. I totally agree with that part. However, I have a problem when Kung Fu teachers, and, and this goes back to the argument of what I consider a fake master, right? So let's let's talk about that. What, what's the criteria here? If they put up a sign, or if they put up a, you know, advertising or marketing or whatever it is, they're advertising their Kung Fu, right? And if they say, okay, come exercise, lose weight, learn, you know, the Kung Fu, learn, you know, self-defense, okay, fine, like maybe you could get away with that, okay? But anytime they pass that point, right? and they start marketing themselves in a way where it's like, hey, you can use Kung Fu and fight, or I will teach you this Kung Fu and you will be able to fight. And I can prove that my you know, techniques work. And then they don't have evidence that it works, right? They're just marketing, right? They're just advertising it. They're like, hey, I'm so-and-so lineage, and I'm so-and-so Sifu, and I'm, you know, so-and-so is my grandmaster, like, my lineage is the best, and, you know, it can do this, it can do that. But then their evidence is none of that. Then you are false advertising. You are actually harming people. You are swindling people to come into your school, thinking that, hey, if I learn your whatever style of Kung Fu that you learn, I'm going to be able to, like, you know, fight people with it on the street and defend myself on the street. And it's like, who knows? Who knows if you could actually do that or not? It's like, you don't have evidence of that. And for most of these masters, it's like, there's zero evidence at all. It's like, okay, you know, your, your, your YouTube videos or whatever videos that you post on the website, it's, uh, you know, you, you know, demonstrating, you know, your structure against the compliant opponent, which is one of your students. You know, you, you're demoing, you know, this, and it's like, hey, move me, try and move me. Nobody's gonna come onto the street and push your hand and be like, hey, I'm gonna try and move you. Like, you demonstrating that that type of Kung Fu to a trained martial artist, that to me is just white belt level stuff. I, I'm sorry. I just have to break it to you like this. To, to any other trained fighter, 
that is just a white belt level thing. It's not, it's, to anybody who's a trained fighter, that's not supposed to be impressive. Like, you might impress, you know, the random guy on the street who watched Ip Man and it's like, hey, yeah, I want to learn Wing Chun. You know, you might impress, you know, the, the mom that's like looking to, you know, enroll their kids into your program just so they can bounce around in, at, at your daycare center, okay? But when you trick people to come into your school and you're saying, hey, I can, you know, teach you something that you can really defend yourself with and you can really, you know, fight people with, that's that's where the problem begins. Because then you, these people are going to be tricked and they're going to, um, you know, they're, 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 they're going to think that they have, you know, lethal fighting skills, right? They're going to train your Kung Fu for 10 years. They're going to think, they're going to think that they have lethal fighting skills and then they realize that they never actually sparred with it. They had never actually tried it out. So it's like, who knows whether your stuff works or not? And that's where you veer off into like danger zone where it's like you're teaching people martial arts and you're promising something, false advertising, and you could be seriously hurting these people because they're gonna think that they've got skills, you know, they're gonna they're gonna think it's Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> they're gonna think that they're le they're a level eighty wizard because they've done their forms for ten years. They think they are a level 80 wizard. They can shoot chi gong balls out of their hands. But once they come up into a street fight scenario, level five fighter, they, <laughs> they are a level five grunt. Yeah. That's that's the end of my rant. Yeah, no, I hear you. Uh, just real. Um, so we're, we're in large agreements. Um, I know there's a difference of opinion between you and I about what we see though. Um, like for instance, there has been some videos uh, where we've recently discussed and um, you were like, why is this person even posting this online? And let's not name any names, but you know, like we know that we can find any given, you know, uh, um, Wing Chun instructor putting out a video with somebody without real context, and you know people will just you know dissect it. Um, the philosophers will say it's trash. The fighters will probably even say it's it might not be may or may not be good. But um, I think the the biggest problem is that um, you know it, the, uh, judging um, anything that we see online and using that to sort of like sort of like solidify your point, um, a point of view, I think is just, you know, uh, doesn't get anybody anywhere. And that's the reason why people issue challenges and say, come fight with my uh, students. And if you can beat him up, you know, then we'll talk. That's, you know, that's sort of like the end results of those uh, conversations. But I think the better point is um, that, well, yes, that is really the only way we're going to know if the teacher teaches well and if the um, the fighter fights well is through, you know, uh, touching hands. I, I, and, I'm, and I'm not even saying like, you know, uh, I'm not going to be the jerk that says like, you know, um, it has to be a, you know, a, a challenge match um, where, you know, like you have to sign a contract that if you, you may die, you know, like uh, we've seen in all the movies. No, um, I mean, I think, you know, frankly, you can you can have just a friendly, you know, sparring match and know somebody's level of class. Because like, you know, uh, anybody who's ever actually sparred, you know, knows that you're not trying to kill somebody, you're just trying to test your skills. And if somebody, if, and if you keep eking up your thing and he has an equally, um, but equal but opposite response, then you can tell, okay, this guy actually knows some stuff. You don't actually have to kill somebody to know whether or not you can kill somebody, you know, frankly. Um, I think um, the only way to answer a lot of these, like, uh, does this person have the true Wing Chun? Does this person have the skills necessary to survive in a fight? It, you're not going to get that out of watching videos. You, I mean, because like you, you know, uh, no matter no, no matter what the video, this the video could be like you know what you think is, uh, you know, um, you may find another video to counter what somebody is saying is a good great video. Somebody may say, I have this great video of my Sifu showing how he's the you know best representative of Wing Chun, and you could say, no, that's BS. Here, look at this other better video. There's going to be groups aligning themselves on both sides of both videos, saying that's great, and both sides will say that's trash. All right, that's just a given. I, I agree with you. I, so, I, I agree with you on on a, on a you know broad spectrum. Yeah. You know, you don't really know until you actually train with them or yeah. you actually spar with them and, and stuff yeah. like that, right? I, I I will agree on that part that because everybody has an opinion, right, and everybody thinks they're right. <laughs> so, the, the, which is why it goes back to the sport 
thing. That's yes, what talking about. exactly. So if you have a regulated set of rules where it doesn't change and you go into the sport and you're saying, okay, you know what? I'm going to do this technique, right? And everybody else has never seen this technique before. And if I could make it work, all of a sudden, hey, it's the hoi wah ho lineage and you, you better start learning from the hoi wah ho lineage. You know what I'm saying? Yep. But if I do this technique and it doesn't work, right? And, and these other Wing Chun masters beat me up and they're like, see, you're just making up some bull crap. Your Wing Chun's not authentic. Then rightfully so, I'm gonna shut shut the hell up and I won't bring it up anymore, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, but because there is no proving ground, so it's just like, okay, my Sifu said this and your Sifu said that. And you know, <laughs> and, it, mm -hmm. it, and it's just, you know, Dungeons and Dragons. It's like, you know, my fireball can beat your ice ice spell and mm -hmm. you know, this, that, this, that. It's, it's fantasy land. And, yeah. and I'd like to really just see that, you know, just, really just let's 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 modernize it people let's you know there's a reason why kung fu is on a decline because no one takes it seriously let's be honest with ourselves let's catch up right let's, so how do we fix it then well you know the stuff we talked about in the first hour no right? like there's new people here so but like that no that, that's a good point like you know rather than ending on a sour note that's the way we fix it we do the wing chun meetups because like you know um uh, I'll, I'll I'll tell you that the Wing Chun meetups were like some of the more humbling things. Like I thought I was pretty good until I met some of the guys that come up to the uh, Wing Chun meetups. Um, the what do you call it? It's the sparring club. I thought you know, oh, I can. Uh, I'm a big guy. I could take a hit, and then I realized, oh, you know what? Some people hit harder than I expected. You know, so the sparring you know meetups will uh, help fix that. Um, the Trinity Project and the uh, Trinity Rule Sets um, is another uh, way of doing it. The uh, the Columbia Martial Arts Competition, the uh, what do you call it? It's, uh, the Cow Style, I guess what it's called. Um, there's, um, I think we somebody on one of those internet um, the Wing Chun forums started listing other competition oriented things. So I guess I really think that you know what we need, the way we fix it, is to get schools to stop closing their doors and start opening themselves up to meeting other practitioners because you know they're scared. Well, that, that's what i'm saying yeah they're scared yeah because because most of them are fake is what i'm saying and yep. people are gonna get mad when i say mm -hmm. this but like it's i'm just trying to tell the truth here i'm not i would say many i would say there's i think i like the word many more than most because like, like people this will, will look at me and, and get angry because like oh who does this guy think he is? He is the. Does he think he's the Messiah of Kung Fu? Does he think he is Shu Shaodong or something like that? I'm like, <laughs> come on, man! Don't put any labels on me. That's not fair. <laughs> yep. I I just happen to be one of those guys that's like looking at it. And I'm like, hey, come on, guys. Let's let's be honest here. Let's be truthful about ourselves. Yep. How good really is your Kung Fu? Nobody knows. You know what I mean? Right. You could be really good. You could actually be really good. And I would love to be able to spar with you. And I'd love to be able to learn off of you, right? But until these open door meetups and stuff like that happen, you know, nothing, nothing's going to change, right? Nothing's going to progress, right? Yep. So, um, yeah. And, and a lot of Kung Fu people are probably going to look at me like I'm the villain or something like that. But, you know, that, that's really what it is, you know? How's the live stream doing? I, I, I don't see it on the phone. Yep. Uh, you know, uh, it looks good to me. Um, okay. uh, but, so somebody uh, mentioned that, you know, uh, we can't fully regulate all of Wing Chun. And I don't think that's even the point. It's like, you know, again, we don't have to go through extremes. Like, you know, the extreme is that every school is closed and nobody uh, touches hands with anybody and they work in their own closed pockets. And the other thing is like a fully, you know, unified um, uh, Wing Chun system where, you know, uh, every form and every uh, hand expression, you know, comes out of a page or in a book. And that's not going to happen. That, he's right. That's not going to happen, but it doesn't need to happen. You don't need to have a fully regulated um, Wing Chun uh, system uh, for that to happen. My let desktop me, audio. Oh, good. Oh, oh you were talking. Okay, fine. Let, I, me, let me add yeah. to that. Let me add to that. Okay. So th there's, so for the MMA guys and the BJJ guys that are listening to this, I know they're thinking this because I'm thinking the same thing. Ah. Okay. <laughs> when people say things like, well, there's too many Wing Chun styles. You can't regulate all the rules. You can't put them all into the same room and get them to fight. I will have to disagree because, because why? I'll tell you why. In Muay Thai or in Jiu Jitsu, it doesn't matter what Muay Thai you do. It doesn't matter what Jiu Jitsu you do. Okay. You could be doing 
10th planet jiu-jitsu. You could be doing Gracie Baja jiu-jitsu. You could be doing so-and-so's jiu-jitsu from, you know, Alaska, okay? It doesn't matter. Like, you could have like 50 different lineages, it doesn't matter. When they go into the IBJJF or when they go into the whatever the second organization is, I don't, I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, the, whatever organization you go into, you, you still have to roll. You still have to try and submit the other guy. Right? So just because your one style of jiu-jitsu specializes in leg locks and then your other school of jiu-jitsu specializes in rubber guard, and then there's another school of jiu-jitsu just specializes in half guard. It doesn't matter. These are these are all positions and moves that are within BJJ, right? You're not going to show up to a BJJ tournament and go like, well, I've never seen that leg lock before. You can't use it on me, okay? No such thing, right? Yep. So I want to give role, a quick shout out. The role, the role happened. Sorry, what's up? I was going to say, um, you know, uh, Mike Spates just joined. He's the guy's uh, Wing Chun MD, and uh, his he's he runs the sparring club, the thing that I went to um, in New York and DC. And uh, his point is that you know uh, this what you're saying is nothing new. Like they used to do this in Hong Kong with like the um, uh, what are those what was the rooftop tournament called again? BMO uh, with the BMO and stuff. Uh, but Mike, um, to your points, I think that's what we're arguing. We're saying we need to get back to that. Uh, we need to do more of that, and um, that you know, uh, there's a lot less of that now than there was back then. Um, uh, yes, we agree with you. Uh, Mark said, uh, Mark Williams said, what's old is new again. We were talking about traditional Chinese martial arts and he, you know, used that phrase, what's old is new again. Yeah, we should go back to the old style of, you know, you want to settle your, you know, who has the, who has the real Wing Chun, go up on a roof, well, maybe not a roof, but go into, rent, rent a dance studio, put down a mat and, uh, you know, you let, you let the hands doing the talking. The problem is that there's a lot of, uh, internet arguing and, uh, the only way to resolve this. Oh, yes. All, yeah. All fluff. All yep. fluff. The only we way to resolve this yeah. is what you said. Yeah, we don't even have to get into that because it's, yep. that's just internet fluff. So yep. my point being is... But how? People say, question. people say like, okay, yeah, Kung Fu, you can't do that. You can't regulate that because, you know, that family does it this way and that Sifu does it this way. I think it's all BS. Exactly. as trained fighters, people that are listening in who fight on a regular basis, they know what I'm talking about. There's no such thing as... You know, your Lana style Muay Thai is not good with the Sitsong Pinong style of Muay Thai. And they do Muay Thai over there differently. And there's the Dutch style, and there's the Thai style. There's no such thing. Put them into the ring and let's see who falls. Whoever falls is the weaker one. And whoever doesn't fall is the stronger one. Then they have claim that they have, their style is strong. You know, you, you can't, you know, you can't keep hiding, you know. Kung Fu guys, you can't keep hiding behind your seafoods and your lineages and all that kind of stuff and you don't want people to burst your bubble. That, that's why people don't take Kung Fu seriously. It's because you, you guys are all hiding. You're paper tigers. Yep, right? and as Mark said, Mark just said, uh, you know, uh, through the brotherhood, a lot of these things are coming back, which thank you, Mark, for saying that. Um, but it's not just the brotherhood, you know, the Wing Chun Trinity Project, you know, um, there's the uh, Wing Chun Club, uh, uh, Wing Chun Club guys in uh, Toronto that are doing meetups. Um, you know, uh, there's people all across the country who are now starting to do more of the meetups because, you know, like the, 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 the uh, younger generation of uh, Wing Chun guys are really interested in actually uh, exchanging skills. They're not like interested in like, uh, can I beat up my Sidai? You know, oh, wow, look, I got, I was able to hit my Sihing finally. You know, that's not where you uh, grow. You grow through like, you know, okay, well, here's the system I inherited from my Sifu. Let me see what happens when I touch hands with another um, a school. Hold holy crap, some of that stuff uh, really did work, but there was this one thing that I couldn't handle and uh, I can't call what he's doing. I can't say that's not Wing Chun because he says he's doing Wing Chun. You know, how, how, how did he be able to, how was he able to do that if I, uh, I was doing Wing Chun and I thought it was better? You have to train with other people in order to, uh, you know, uh, see who's uh, better. And, uh, and frankly, I think that, you know, we don't have to get to the point where we're, you know, constantly uh, doing challenge matches to see what school is better. I think we could find out, um, you know, uh, whose who stuff works and whose stuff doesn't just by, you know, getting together and just training with one another you know that that'll surface it better and faster good right and then we can sort of basically just 
put a lid on this because we've been going back and forth for maybe about 45 minutes on you know <laughs> the fake masters and stuff like that so we'll just put a lid on it and we'll just say spar more meet up more and train like you are supposed to prove yourself you know cro cross you know cross pollinate prove improve compete against each other and then improve some more so let, let's move on to the next thing now before i uh forget um there, there, there is a cultural side to this, and I wanted to talk about this a little bit, uh, you know, because, you know, I'm Dynasty MMA and all that kind of stuff. So we, you know, we talk about, you know, culture as well, Asian culture as well. So I think there is a small, I don't know how large, but I think there is a small segment of this that other teachers and other sifus are just not going to see it my way. And I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm going to try and explain what I mean, okay? So, from a Chinese perspective, okay? So let's just say from my perspective, because I'm Chinese. From, from a Chinese perspective, or maybe from an Asian perspective, okay? There is an element that is not being talked about in these Kung Fu schools and Kung Fu culture and things like that, okay? And I'm going to talk about it because, uh, you know, we want to talk about something new. We don't want to just talk about the same stuff that we've been talking about for an hour and a half. Is the cultural and the heritage side about it, okay? So, as a Chinese person, or as an Asian person, when I see Kung Fu, which is inherently a Chinese martial art, right? Like, like Chinese, traditional Chinese martial arts we're talking about, right? When I see Kung Fu in the state that it is, maybe I have a different take on it from someone who's not Chinese, right? And, and, and I'll, I'll share with you what I mean by that. When I see it at, at the state that it is, which is obviously, you know, not very good, right? People make fun of Chinese Kung Fu and stuff like that, and, you know, it doesn't work, and it's not really proven in the cage, that kind of thing, all that kind of stuff, right? And, you know, you'll get comments, like, even from people who are inboxing me right now, they're sending me, you know, private messages, right? They're, they're, they're taking jabs, right? They're like, hey, why does every Wing Chun practitioner look like an overweight, like, video game player? You know what I mean? You know, you'll, you'll get comments like that, right? And, and it, you know, again, again, let's go, going back to the cultural side of it, going back to the her heritage side of it. If you're not Chinese and you do, you know, Chinese martial arts and you do Kung Fu, your connection with it may or may not be as deep as say someone who is Chinese and they're doing Chinese Kung Fu. And I'm and I'll and I'll try and you know explain what I mean. So I'll I'll just use my personal example, okay? If, if I do karate and I'm not Japanese, but I'm I'm doing karate, I learn karate, I have a good relationship with my sensei, whatever it is, okay? Maybe I've traveled to Japan and I studied karate. Unless I've made up my mind, right? Unless I'm like, hey, you know what? I want to pass on the karate as a Chinese person. I want to pass on the Japanese karate, even though I'm not Japanese or, or whatever. I could be white, whatever, black, whatever. It doesn't matter, right? If I made, unless I made up my mind that I'm like, hey, I'm going to pass on this lineage of Japanese karate. I'm going to make it proud. Unless I'm, unless I decided to do that, I don't really have a connection to the karate that I, that I need to have, right? I'm just a practitioner, right? So I'll practice karate for however long, I, I, uh, you know, I, I'll practice it for, right? Two years, four years, five years. Maybe I'll practice for 15 years. Who knows, right? But once I leave the karate, the karate is no longer part of my identity. Are you following me here? Yeah. So for a lot of people, Chinese or not Chinese, it doesn't matter, right? For a lot of people, when they do Kung Fu, they may choose that, okay, I'm going to do Kung Fu, but, you know, eventually I'll fall out of it. You know, I won't do Kung Fu anymore. It's not part of my identity. I don't need to care about it. I don't need to care whether Kung Fu is going to continue on or if it's going to die off or if it's seen as a joke or if it's not seen as a joke. I'm going to take what I can from Kung Fu, use it to benefit myself or maybe benefit some other people around me. I'm going to enjoy Kung Fu for what it is and then eventually when I die, I'm going to leave it alone, right? Now, there's that aspect of it, right? Now, from a Chinese aspect, okay, 
just from my own perspective as a Chinese person and, you know, me coming out and having Dynasty MMA as a brand and stuff like that, blah, blah, blah. I look at it from a deeper perspective. I look at it from a cultural side and a heritage side. I'm like, okay, if everybody that, and I want to use the word everybody, but if most people that do Kung Fu today think that this level of Kung Fu is acceptable, you know, even though we're getting beat down by anybody else who doesn't do Kung Fu, we're, we're getting laughed at by anybody who doesn't do Kung Fu. If everybody who does Kung Fu, the supposed paragons of Kung Fu, the supposed masters of Kung Fu, are only at this level, at the blue belt level or at the purple belt level, but they, they are no longer at the black belt level, they're not at the pinnacle of what that needs to be, then me as a Chinese person, when I see that happen, it kind of is like, hmm, like, uh-oh, what's going to happen to the future of Kung Fu, right? Let's, 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 let's think about it in another perspective, okay? Let's say if I was a brown person, okay, and yoga is extremely popular throughout the world. Yoga, okay? And I'm sure there's many lineages of yoga, there's many practices of yoga, right? But, 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 but let's say if I was a brown person, and I looked at yoga and I'm like, hey, yoga is no longer yoga. Yoga has become this thing that is not yoga anymore, right? And if I have children right, in the future and there are also going to be brown children or whatever, right? And they want to go back and they want to look at a piece of their cultural, you know, history and they want to look at, you know, their cultural heritage and how it has evolved through the times and they're like, hey, you know, I want to learn authentic yoga, but apparently I can't learn it anymore because everybody who's passed down yoga has watered it down to a state where it's no longer yoga. Right? So, and and, and, and the, the fault goes for everybody. It, it's not just about, okay, Chinese seafoods and non-Chinese seafoods. They all do it. They're, they're all part of it, right? They're all equally, like, in on it. They're all equally, you know, doing a bad job for, for the most part. For the most part, I'm saying in general. I know there are good guys out there, right? And, and I want to bring up those names that are, you know, people that are doing a good job. Guys like Alan Orr, right? Mark Phillips, Emin Bosteppi, probably saying his name wrong. Uh, Chris Collins, Wang Zipeng from Beijing, right? And I'm sure there's all, the, you know, a, a bunch of other seafoods around the world who have legit skills and are doing Kung Fu right, right? But however, the optics of Kung Fu, the, 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 the people that are watching, the optics of Kung Fu, the, the true representators of Kung Fu, the ones with the loudest representation, the ones with the loudest voices are predominantly the bad stuff <laughs> from Kung Fu, okay? It's not the good ones, okay? The good guys that do Kung Fu correctly don't get any of the visible shine. It's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's not there. It doesn't exist in the ecosystem of martial arts. It doesn't exist in people's consciousness. When they watch Kung Fu and they look at Kung Fu, it's always people posting videos of Kung Fu guys getting knocked out, Kung Fu guys, you know, getting splattered, like this, that, this, that. And if the optics of the martial art is not very good and most of the optics are bad, then you know what? There's a problem. You know, it's not something that you can hide and be like, oh, well, you know, you're just not looking at the right place. Like, you're not going to China and studying under, you know, grandmasters, who, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, well, it doesn't matter because the optics of it is that anybody who studies this 90% of the time is a whack job, is, is a nut job. So people aren't going to care whether hey, I'm going to find that real Sifu who is, you know, hiding somewhere in an apartment in Hong Kong. Like, like people are not going to do that. They're going to look at the optics of it and they're like, okay, well, your best representation barely scratches the surface of what we modern martial artists think is, you know, effective martial arts or whatever it is, whatever you call it. Then slowly, 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 the Kung Fu is just going to die off. It's just going to die off. It's just going to die off. And, and, and if you are a person that has dedicated yourself to the life of Kung Fu, whether you're Chinese or not, I'm sure you're going to feel the same way. You're like, hey, I wish Kung Fu wasn't like this. That's why I'm trying to keep it alive. And you could be like a black Sifu. You could be a white Sifu. It doesn't matter, right? But even more so on a deeper level, if you are a Chinese Sifu and you are in on this crap, 
like you are you are part of the problem where you are teaching bad kung fu then you know double shame on you right if, if you're not chinese then it's like okay shame on you but you know what it doesn't really matter because you don't have to keep up the chinese culture anyway because you're not chinese but if you are chinese and you're in on it you're in on the on, on the scam then double shame on you because holy shit, what are you trying to do to the chinese culture that's very compelling um you know uh I uh, I don't meant to make sure the recording was still good. The I have to be careful of agreeing with you because I'm in you know this um, and I'm part of the community and stuff. But um, I think um, it's like you know when you say something controversial um, and then somebody like takes it personally without reflecting on you know like uh, you know like um, I'm trying to think of a better analogy than using the uh, current politics and uh, you know uh, current news but um, I'll give you an example of like four years ago there was the uh, in American politics they said um, you know uh, a, a presidential candidate referred to as a group of people called you know the deplorables and then everybody who she wasn't talking about, took it personally and said like, well, you know, just because I'm not voting for you, I'm deplorable. And frankly, what she was talking about were like the people who truly were deplorable and racist and stuff like that. Uh, she have probably found a better uh, argument uh, than that, right? Uh, but um, uh, your message should not be interpreted as um, <clears throat> all uh, uh, Kung Fu is bad, because that's not what you said. Right. Uh, although you'd say most, and I would choose many or a lot or uh, some other word, but um, majority even, but uh, yeah, maybe most the majority the same. But um, the people who are, uh, receive your message, I would say, shouldn't be uh, taking it like, well, he said that uh, most people, um, you know, uh, are this way, so therefore he must be talking about me. Uh, I would um, internalize your message and be like, well, no, if you're not doing this, don't think about what uh, don't don't take it as if he's directing it towards you but be part of the solution not part of the problem when you know um, y y you see some uh, you know uh, shoddy representation of Wing Chun you know um, you know uh, should you be you know exposing it be like oh you know that that guy is full of crap look at his Wing Chun is bad or do you go and um, just be like uh, well you know um, this is the way I think it should be done um, I think there's more to be said about demonstrating the, you know, uh, the good Wing Chun, demonstrating it by, you know, uh, showing your Wing Chun in a fighting context, showing that your doors are open, that anybody can come in and challenge you, showing that when that happens, you know, uh, sometimes you get beat up and that's okay, but sometimes you do well and that's, you know, even better, you know, but uh, the only way to, you know, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, fix the problem is and the only way to preserve the culture is by making it better and the only way you can make it better is by all the stuff we discussed in the past pressure test your stuff you know be open to uh, outsiders and um you know uh be you know and just be part of the solution not part of the problem yeah and then you know yeah no no that, that's you know basically that's that's what it is but i i never go into this topic on like you know the internet forums or anything like that because I find that the majority of people are just not going to understand what I'm talking about because I feel like most of the people in, you know, Wing Chun forums and stuff like that are not, in fact, Chinese when they practice this martial art. So to them, it's more of like, okay, I am an observer. I am, you know, someone from the outside. I am, you know, you know, training in it and, and, and stuff like that, which is totally fine. But what, what I'm talking about is, like, okay, it goes deeper than that. It's like I look at it as like a shameful thing as like, if other people keep doing it like this, right? I look at it from as, a, as an angle of, okay, well, this is technically Chinese martial arts and you're putting a shame on that. So by proxy, me being Chinese means I produce something shameful. And because I'm associated with it, I'm disgusted by it in a way. But I don't think the general practitioner looks at it like that, yep. whether or not they're, they're Chinese or not, right? But I think the general practitioner does not look at it like that. But I look at it like that just from my knowledge of whatever history or, or whatever I care about, right? I care that Kung Fu looks bad because I want it to be good, right? Because I'm a Kung Fu guy. I want it to be good. But why is, why is Kung Fu so overwhelmingly bad? And, and you know, and I'm just asking that question. Yep.
no, I, um, it's, it's, it's something that should be, uh, you know, pe people take things personally and they, uh, they just shut off from the discussion. And, uh, you know, um, I think the right answer is to be humble and to ask, you know, is this genuine? Am I actually doing, you know, um, the, the, the martial arts, the, uh, you know, uh, uh, get, you know, uh, yeah. Am I doing it any service by how I'm practicing it? How can I improve the art? And the only way you do that is by questioning it. You know, you always question yourself and it's the only way you can uh, find the answers. So, uh, so we have like 15 minutes left. Is there anything uh, yeah. aside from that stuff we should uh, cover? I yeah. think uh, maybe, maybe just one final thing. Uh, one final thing is that um, good martial arts systems or good martial arts are always competing against each other. Uh, sorry are always competing against themselves in order to make themselves better, right? And what I mean by that is jiu-jitsu, the Japanese jiu-jitsu originally was Japanese jiu-jitsu, and then there was an offshoot style of jiu-jitsu that became judo. And then judo defeated the original Japanese jiu-jitsu because it proved that its concepts were correct. They were like, hey, we're going to modify the techniques to turn it into a sport so that you can now train it with 100% resistance. Whereas the Japanese jiu-jitsu were like, oh no, we're too deadly. It's self-defense. We don't train it with 100% resistance because we can kill people. So the judo ended up overtaking the original Japanese jiu-jitsu because it was turned into a sport and you could train it 100%. Then the judo got passed down and it became Brazilian jiu-jitsu and it covered all the groundwork. So once it turned into a sport and you could actually put these moves to use, then it actually made it better because it competed with itself, okay? Muay Thai, boxing, same thing. It had a hundred years of the sport, okay? It had a whole century to refine and test their techniques, Thai boxers fighting Thai boxers, Thai boxers fighting Dutch kickboxers, and then taking those techniques, and now it's the new Muay Thai, okay? Boxing, same thing. In the beginning, it looked like bare knuckle boxing, right? Then it became better and better and better, and now the highest level of boxing, you know, Mayweather and Lomachenko and stuff like that, you know what I mean? So you need to have that sport environment where the martial art tests itself so then it becomes better as time develops. But Kung Fu never tests itself with itself, so it never becomes better. People are just stuck like 200, 300 years ago doing forms. Yep, and that's, that's uh, pretty much what you just described is the... Um the uh, mission statements of uh, the Wing Chun Brotherhood. Uh, the whole point of, um, at least within the Wing Chun community, the idea is you know, to get uh, Wing Chun practitioners, despite lineage differences, to come together and improve one another. Like, uh, you, know, you, you, only, you, you can only improve you know, you know, by challenging yourselves and you can only you know, um, uh, you know, improve with each other's help. Yeah, and one final thing I'll say is like, you know, for anybody watching this, now in the future or whatever okay because i'm sure we're going to save this video and share it to everybody um if you are offended you know you might be the, the person that i'm talking about but if you are not that person that i'm talking about then you don't have to feel offended because i'm not talking about you right but if you feel like you are personally attacked guess what you might be one of those kung fu larpers that i'm talking about the, the guys that you know say that you trained for 15 years but you can't actually use it and anyway, and I'll add, I'll add to no, you're right. Um, I'll add to it in a nicer way, I guess. But like, um, if you're offended and you think you're not the person he's talking about, prove it. Like, don't do what he said. You know, somebody comes and says, "I I, I want to see if my skills work in your school." Don't shut them out. You know, um, you don't. Um, uh, so I bring my Wing Chun Brotherhood project to your city, and there's an open Wing Chun meetup. And uh, I get in touch with one of your students, and you say, "No, don't go to the go to that because they may hurt you or something like that." That has never happened at one of my uh, events, but um, you know, um, don't close your doors, don't seclude yourself, um, and uh, be more open. Don't be part of the problem. Be part of the solution. And I welcome everybody out there to come over and test your Kung Fu. I love to test your Kung Fu. I love to test my own Kung Fu. So it's it's an open invitation for anybody, especially some of the guys that are like angry and they're like, what are you talking about? Um, you know, I would love for you to show up and, you know, we have a friendly competition, you know what I mean? But, you know, nine out of 10 of these people are not gonna show up. So what can I do? My, my yep. Kung Fu will never be tested, so. That's 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 all it's gonna be. So basically, I could call myself Grandmaster, and, and I'll be okay because no nah. one's gonna come and test my kung fu anyways. So no, like be I, the Hoi Wa Ho lineage, it'll be the Hoi Wa Ho lineage. 
and it's starting today, and nobody can say that I don't know anything because nobody comes and tests each other's kung fu ideas. Well, then I officially challenge you. Uh, I'll get, I'll book my flight to uh, uh, Ontario um, at Markham, and uh, you know I'll bring some friends, and sure. we'll put it online and show people if this is sure. how it's done. So, all sure. right. Except I, I accept everyone. Yep. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Thanks right. for your time, Adam. Thank you. Thank you for uh, helping me set this up. This is awesome. All right, and thanks to everybody who uh, came in, uh, joined the chat, gave us some interesting feedback, uh, gave some good questions, and uh, I, this is uh, a good success, a good first shot. Thank you very much, guys. All right, have a good one. Take care.